Welcome back guys to another episode on my channel Featured Creatures and today we're going to be talking about one of my most favorite things about bioactive enclosures and that is the microfauna. And this microfauna for this enclosure or for all of my enclosures is also known as springtails. So springtails are a very 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 important part for every single bioactive enclosure. So what they do, their main job just like isopods is that they are decomposers. So with that being said, if your animal were to poop inside the enclosure, they'll break it down. If you put leaves inside your enclosure, they use that as food and they'll break that down. Um, if you put any other organic material as in other plants that end up dying every now and then, or you have some wood in the enclosure, they're gonna go ahead and break that down. So they do that and they basically turn that into plant food, which is a very, very, very good thing. Let me back you guys out so you guys can see. It is a very, very, very good thing when it comes to having them inside of your bioactive enclosures. But another benefit to them is that they actually eat mold. So you don't really have to worry about mold growing or having an out or a, an influx of just tons of mold that are growing because of the humidity, because these guys do eat mold and they'll break that down as well, which is perfect because the opposite of that, the isopods, um, the isopods will actually die by having too much mold in there. So you definitely, definitely, definitely don't want to have isopods in there by themselves without having springtails. You can do it and it can be manageable, but especially for uh, enclosures that have a lot more humidity or just a lot more water in general, like tropical enclosures, those ones, uh, springtails are kind of a necessity for that. So uh, let's go ahead and get into seeing what they look like. So springtails, you guys take a look. This is actually one of my master cultures and you guys can see once I flip this over, you'll understand there's a lot more in here than what you would think. So this is actually one of my master cultures, which is great. Um, I actually took these when I, uh, the way that I got these is that I originally ordered them off of Josh's Frogs. Now, of course, us at Feature Creatures, we do sell them now. But when I started this two, three years ago, I actually ordered them from Josh's Frogs. And uh, not all of them survived the when they did first come in, uh, but enough of them survived to actually just keep breeding. And now, if you guys take a look, I have them in every single one of my ice spot enclosures and this is how many enclosures that I have. So that is an amazing thing. I also have nine other cultures or eight other cultures of springtails that I've been culturing as well. As well as we got some new cultures of springtails and this one is actually our orange springtails. So these guys are new to the hobby. There's orange ones and red ones and we're actually about to get some red ones real soon. But for now, we're just gonna be talking about the white ones even though they basically all do the same thing. So. Uh, putting these guys in your enclosures. There's a few ways that you can do it. Um, one of the most, one of the easiest ways is actually just grabbing like a piece of charcoal kind of like this with some springtails on it like that. See all the amount of springtails and then just placing that inside of your enclosure and then they'll all get off right on their own. They most likely will go inside the substrate and they'll find each other and breed that way. Then you'll have a bunch of springtails in your enclosure or you can just grab like the big piece like this and you guys saw there's a ton over there. Oh, there's actually a zebra in here. So that's what I meant is I seeded this actual enclosure originally from my zebra enclosure. Oh, it fell in there, I'll find it later. But overall, this is how many, this is how it's been going since I put them in there. They've been breeding a lot, which is great for me, but I do put them in every single enclosure that I have. So I will be showing you guys uh, my actual scorpion enclosure, which is great. Um, I put them in my scorpion enclosure. I put them in my other bioactive enclosures. They do very well. I don't have any mold outbreaks. The only times that I do have some mold outbreaks is when I put a little too much food and a little too much nutrients for the mold to grow off of. But then the springtails handle that within, within a few days. So don't have to worry about that. So they have just been a great overall cleanup crew that you want to add with your isopods. So another thing with them is that they can, as you guys may know with their name, jump around 12 inches. So when you guys are keeping them like this, I do have a lot and uh, a lot of them are just hiding right now. So I don't really have to worry too much about it. But since they can jump out of enclosures, that's why I always have lids. And since they are very small, this is when I started this enclosure it was 320. So not too long ago, it has only been four days since I started it. And obviously I have a lot in there, but I took a lot from my uh, zebra bins because they've been breeding so well in there, so prolifically that I don't have to worry about it. I also have another tub underneath here and these guys have been doing extremely well as well. So it doesn't look like too much. 
let's go ahead and flip this main one over just like I did the other one there's a lot more that are actually under there hiding and breeding and then I'll show you guys the rest of this uh, cultures that I have right now but then here is my orange ones so I don't have too many of these I only bought around a hundred but if you guys can see let's take a look so there goes one of them right there they are obviously completely orange that one's not moving so let's try and find another one for you guys there's another one inside the enclosure right there so let's take this lid off and you can be able to see them so that is an orange springtail so i have only around like 100 of them in here obviously they're not all out on the sides they're mostly inside the dirt but these, once these guys start bring, start breeding for us, then that is going to be a great thing as well. I got these on the 19th, so uh, they are relatively new to us. But the white springtails, we also have, these ones are our temperate ones that are inside these enclosures, as well as we do have tropical ones, um, which is more perfect that, that can handle a little bit more uh, water and humidity. So there are different springtails for different, uh, different areas, different occasions. I also have springtails inside of Jackson's Cage, my bearded dragon. Um, and as well as uh, his little baby mama that's underneath. And uh, I mean, really only, the only real con is that for some species, you do have to just worry that, make sure that they won't infest um, because they do breed a lot. You just have to make sure like in a tarantula enclosure where you don't really have to water the enclosure too much. Um, springtails aren't really too necessary for that. Um, but for most other enclosures, like I said, for scorpions, for anoles, for other small lizards, chameleons, and all that, they are a great source for uh, being a cleanup crew or decomposer. So definitely I prefer everyone to get um, springtails because they're great for every enclosure, like I said. And that is all that I have to tell you guys. Oh, and one more thing. For dart frogs and other very, very, very small lizards or frogs, they are also a great food source. So since they breed very fast, um, a lot of dart frogs do eat springtails. So that is a great thing. So you're basically getting a lot of free food by breeding. I probably spend, these guys eat dried yeast uh, as well that I put in here, but I feed them Rapashi Bug Burger or people feed them dried yeast or they just put long grain rice and let that mold in there. And that's where they'll get a lot of their nutrition to eat from. But as long as you feed them right, um, they'll go ahead and breed. They breed really, really, really fast and they become a great food source for smaller lizards, which you know you don't really have to buy much because since you can breed them yourself, you can do that in sphagnum moss, you can do that on charcoal, you can do that in just soil. Um, either one would be perfect for them all. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.